I think the, the thing that I've learned from this is more that if you reach out to people, you have a good chance of someone being interested in showing your work. I'm a freelance illustrator. I've been working in London for the last six years and then I went freelance three years ago. Um, I studied in Paris for five years and then I decided to move to London and start working there. Well, I always liked illustrations, but I didn't really know what I could do with it as a, as a job. I wasn't sure uh, what, kind, what kind of project I could do. Um, and then I did an internship in London with a guy called Andy Spencer. And I did a month there where I was working on some illustration for the London Transport Museum. And it was really fun. It was really cool. And there was a really colorful pro project. Um, and so that's when I realized that I wanted to become an illustrator. At the beginning, I actually, because I worked full time at an agency as an illustrator, and then I started, I knew I wanted to go freelance, but I wasn't ready, so I went part time with my job. So I was doing three days there and then two days freelancing. So that was a good sort of transition to start getting clients and, and getting some money in because it can be quite hard at the beginning. And then I was also working most of my weekends and evenings, so it was a bit intense. The transition was a bit difficult. I was spending a lot of my free time to do personal work and put my illustration style out there, but I wasn't getting necessarily the client at the beginning. So I really had to just put my work online all the time. So I was posting on my social media a lot, any sort of competition, any exhibition I could be a part of, I applied to be a part of it. And uh, I just sort of forced my work out there so that people would pick it up and then eventually I want to work with me and uh, I, also I also contacted a lot of agencies and brands and little creative studios that I liked just saying you know hey <laughs> I'm here and then you know a few of them re replied and then I got a couple of projects from that as well so that helped to get some client projects and then when you have client projects they refer to you or they you have more work to put on your portfolio so you get more work out of that. Yeah I think I had to sacrifice a lot of my free time because when I was still transitioning and still working part-time at my um, agency I just all my evenings and weekends were I was working on personal work all the time it's kind of good because at that point I was a bit new in London and I didn't know as many people so I had it didn't feel as much as a sacrifice as if it would now because now I really have like a life here and I always want to go out and do stuff so it kind of happened at the, at the right time. But yeah, I mean, I had very little free time and obviously financially, I was very tight. <laughs> I think I just thought I need to give this a try. I had been thinking of freelancing for years and I figured if I don't do it now, I, you know, I'm never going to do it. Um, I mean, commission work is very important because that's where you're going to, that's where I earn most of my money. So I, I need commission work to, uh, sustain myself. Um, I, I guess as a freelancer I work about 60% of the time on client projects and then maybe 30% of the time on personal work and 10% on like collaborations or pro bono projects. Um, and how to sustain sort of relationship with your clients I guess is just to be a good person to work with. So I try to be very friendly, which is anyway in my character. I like to be, you know, quite uh, social and friendly to people and do the best work you can do every time and, and, uh, and be really organized and, uh, and not lead clients on and, and you know, uh, respect your deadlines, things like that, that I think has made clients come back to wanting to work with me because, you know, it, was, it, went, it went well. I sell my work online mainly. I did a few art fairs in the, in the, in the past, um, but now I'm mainly online on my website. So I sell usually limited edition prints, either giclée or screen printed pieces. And then I also like to try different type of products that you can do. So I do pins and patches. I did socks, swimsuit, but that was just weird. It was very, uh, it was actually a much sexier cut than I thought. So when I tried it, it was quite embarrassing. Um, but yeah, so I tried to do different types of products with my illustration to see how it looks as different objects. It's quite natural. I mean, I will sometimes push a product if, for instance, it's like, um, it's only going to be there for a certain amount of time. So sometimes I do t-shirt collaboration with Everpress and they have like a two week or a month deadline of how, you know, that's how long you have to 
um, buy the product. So for that, I'll try and push it on my Instagram using my stories. Um, I think it's worth pursuing having your product to be on sale because it's not so much financial because that's not that's a very minimum part of my income. But I just like the idea of people having my work and, and being able to, 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 to get my work in their home. So that's mainly what drives me to want to put stuff out there. I, I've done a few murals for clients before, um, but I've always wanted to do something for myself. And when I moved back to London and I moved to Shoreditch, there's obviously so many uh, murals and, and illustrations that I wanted to, to do one for myself. And uh, a friend of mine lives on Red Church Street and he had a black door. And so when uh, I got the okay from him, I just went and I did one myself. And it's really cool because there's something really nice about doing street art because obviously a lot of people will get to see it. And uh, I put my Instagram handle on it as in a little QR code for people to know where it linked to. And it's nice. People like send me pictures and stuff of, of of the mural so yeah it's really nice and it's something that I'd like to do more. I mainly use Instagram to market myself um, it's my main social media um, and it's where I'll, I'll, I'll put any of the work that I have or any of the new projects or anything that's happening where I want people to come or like a talk or or an exhibition or an event of any kind it'll always be on Instagram. I, I, try, to, I try to post um, once a day on my Instagram account uh, because I feel like I, do, I get a lot of my work through Instagram so it's good that I keep my portfolio quite fresh and uh, current. Um, I don't, I, I guess I have a bit of a strategy in the sense that there are better times to post or better days which I try to follow because it does make an, a, a bit of a difference on the, the reaching. Um, so yeah, I try to follow a few guidelines and, and post as many times as I can. So yeah, I have a couple of exhibitions coming up early 2019. I have a first one in Paris and then one at the print space. I wanted to try and have um, an exhibition both in London and Paris because I do feel like I'm a bit in between those two cities and the, the two countries. So I really wanted to try and combine two shows. Um, well, I'm still in the, in the preparation <laughs> phase. So I, I think, um, no, I guess mainly... I think the, the thing that I've learned from this is more that if you reach out to people, you have a good chance of, of, of someone being interested in showing your work. And I would see all these artists doing solo shows and I, you, know, you, you get quite overwhelmed about, oh, can I do it? Or I don't know anyone in the industry. And, but actually, if you, if you reach out to the, the, peop the right people, then you can get something. You can get something. And it's, it's quite nice that people have faith in wanting to show your work and share their space.